I'm here with uh, Marion Williamson. Now, according to, uh, to CNN's Brian Stelter, she was the most searched of the 10 candidates during this debate in 49 out of 50 states. And I want to play a moment uh, from, uh, from Ms. Williamson from earlier tonight talking about the water crisis in Flint, Michigan. My response on the Flint water crisis is that Flint is just the tip of the iceberg. I was recently in Denmark, South Carolina, where it is, there is a lot of talk about it being the next Flint. We, we have an administration that has gutted the Clean Water Act. We have communities, particularly communities of color and disadvantaged communities all over this country who are suffering from environmental injustice. I assure you, I lived in Gross Point. What happened in Flint would not have happened in Gross Point. This is part of the dark underbelly of American society. The racism, the bigotry, and the entire conversation that we're having here tonight, if you think any of this wonkiness is going to deal with this dark psychic force of the collectivized hatred that this president is bringing up in this country, then I'm afraid that the Democrats are going to see some very dark days. We need to say it like it is. It's bigger than Flint. It's all over this country. It's particularly people of color. It's particularly people who do not have the money to fight back. And if the Democrats don't start saying it, then why would those people feel that they're there for us? And if those people don't feel it, they won't vote for us. And Trump will win. Welcome. Thank you. How did you feel you did tonight? Well, I didn't feel I did very good, but then I got off stage and I was told I did okay. Um, it, it's interesting to me because you played a similar role in both debates that, that I've seen you in, and part of it is almost at times... Uh, it's almost like a narrator in a play sometimes commenting on, it's like a, a production of Our Town and the you're Greek narrating, course. yeah, you're a Greek chorus, yeah. or you're narrating what's going on. And, and you've made this point now twice and I think it's a really interesting and valid one, which is if you think plan, I think in the first debate you said plans alone are not gonna do it. In this case you said wonkiness, uh, you know, it, it, it's not gonna be enough. Um, it, I understand the argument that's not enough, that there's something larger, you used to call them darker forces at play. What is it that is needed if it's not wonkiness and plans? Because obviously those are needed, but what else do you say? What is the, that? We've never dealt with a figure like this in American history before. This man is our president, is not just a politician, he's a phenomenon. And an insider political game will not be able to defeat it. We need. And I'm sorry, can you put your mic just a little closer to your mouth? <coughs> uh, just a little closer to your mouth, like that. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's fine. Okay. What I was saying is that the president is not just a politician. He's a phenomenon. And an insider political game will not defeat him. The only thing will defeat him is if we have an, a, a phenomenon of equal force. And that phenomenon is a moral uprising of the American people. You know, people laugh at the idea that love has political power. I don't know how anybody could say that after looking at Gandhi and the Indian Revo Indian independence movement or Dr. King and the civil rights movement. But if you look at terrorism and you look at Nazism, clearly hatred has a lot to do with what unfolds politically. We need an emotional and psychological uprising among people who have been so chronically disengaged from the political process. And a conversation only about wonkiness and intellectual analysis, the part of the brain that intellectually analyzes an issue is not the same part of the brain that decides who to vote for. D Donald Trump was not elected because he wanted to take Iraq's oil and surround the oil fields with soldiers and drain out all the, all the oil, which was an impossible thing. You're saying he was elected because he tapped into... He tapped into racism, He tap, and he taps. It's not just what he did, it's what he's continuing to do. Racism, bigotry, homophobia, anti-Semitism, although he covers the anti-Semitism with all this pro-Israel stuff, xenophobia. He taps into the worst aspects of the human character. This is what authoritarian fascist dictators do. So Senator, Senator um, uh, Sanders is calling for a revolution, getting young people involved, getting people involved in the process. You're calling for a moral uprising. Well, I think is we need both, clearly, and because I remember I, I agree with most of the political plans of people such as Senator Sanders and Senator Warren. But what does but that we look need like? Both. What does a moral <laughs> uprising look like? It means that you realize that uh, how much of our public policy is heartless. As soon as we bought in, and this began 40 years ago, as soon as we allowed an amoral what is essentially a sociopathic economic system to take hold and corrupt our government like it does. And what do I mean by that? When I was a child, the corporation was expected to care. The American corporation was expected to care if somebody had worked at the corporation for, uh, for decades, that they had a dignified retirement. Once we bought into this trickle-down economic theory, 
where all that matters is fiduciary responsibility to the stockholders, even if it's at the expense of other stakeholders, such as the workers, such as the environment, such as the community. We split ourselves off from any soul, from any ethics, from any conscience, from any remorse. That is what a sociopath is. So what it has done is it's made us a heartless country. When you have in the richest country in the world, children who go to school hungry, asking the teacher, do you have anything to eat? That's heartless. When you have people who are hungry and you do not feed them, when you have children who are, need educating and you do not educate them, when you have tax policies and other economic policies that make it so much easier for rich, the already rich to get richer and more difficult for anyone else to make it at all, this is heartless. It is divorced from ethics. It is divorced from morality. That, that, that always leads to disaster, whether it's for an individual or for a nation. So how is there any candidate out there if if uh look this is is a political race in the end uh if you're not the one are you or have you already identified somebody you would support well but wait a minute let's talk about is there someone who is doing that and the person is me mm. but other than that a person whose politics i would support I'm a Bernie and Elizabeth person. I, I'm, a, I, you know, I'm, I'm a Bernie. But just in turn, I, I mean, it, I just find it really interesting. This notion that a, pl a plan is not enough, and who else does anybody else that you have seen of all? Why 20 do you need anybody else? You got me. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is this? Anybody else? No, that's my point. Well, yeah, I, know, I, I agree. Like, well, there I is know, no one else like you on that stage that I can. My, I don't, you, I don't take positions, but I can tell you that is a position I will stand by. Oh, well, you but, got me, so what, what, but, what do you So think? what is it like to be on that stage with the background, you know, you have a fascinating background of, of dealing with people's emotions and people's feelings and addressing people in, a, in grief and in difficult times in their life, and it's a background unlike any of these other folks on this stage. What is it like to see a debate through your eyes as you are standing there? Well, it's, it's disappointing because the conversation that's being had in a debate like that, I know is not the conversation that will win. It's not a conversation, that's not a level of conversation that will defeat the level of, of collectivized hatred and, and real fascistic waters that this man is, 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 is dipping into. And so it's frustrating for me, but this is the good news. When I'm out with voters, voters are ready. You see, American civilization is not stuck in the, in the 20th century the way American politics is. Everybody else has moved forward in business, in, in education, in medicine. We have a much more whole person perspective in life. People go to therapy. People are religious. People have uh, people go to uh, go to yoga classes. People know now. It's just this but it does political seem, system that's so stuck it in does this overly seem to secularized. Me that, it does seem to me, and maybe it's just that I'm you know in a grieving process. But it, and and many people have come up to me in grief and connect with me in that way. And it's it is a different kind of thinking. And I feel like you exist in that space always. That is the the realm in which you work. <coughs> and it is a very difficult. It's a different life. And it's a very real thing that many Americans are feeling and experiencing in pain, which you discuss, but no one else really discusses. And it's, it's kind of interesting. Okay, so let's talk about that. The, 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 the truth of the matter is a lot of people discuss it, but they don't discuss it within political field because the political field isn't open. It makes us feel, talks about us like we're wacky, talks about us like we're crazy. You see what's happened. But so it's very difficult to penetrate that field. But the truth of the matter is, this is how the American people talk today. The political conversation is not the way the American people talk. The American people, things happen. People go to therapy. People lose people. People go through heartbreak. People lose people to, to yeah. death. People get sick. This, this, uh, this conversation where we're only going to keep it about the symptom and never about the cause and only about things on the outside, that is how we got here, Anderson. This is why you were the most searched person tonight.